Hello and thank you for joining me. In this video we are aiming at entry 3 level functional skills and we are going to take our look at everybody's favourite, fractions. Let's start then with a definition. So a fraction is used to describe a part of something. So if we can break something down into equal sized parts, then those parts are fractions. And when we use the word something, we really mean absolutely anything. It could be, for instance, an amount of money. So you can divide money into equal parts. It could be uh, a group of people. Maybe you want to split people into smaller groups. It could be something as simple as a chocolate cake. Anything at all that can be broken down into equal sized parts, then we can call those parts fractions. Let's have a look then at what a fraction looks like and what the parts of a fraction mean. Well, a fraction always has a number on the top, it has a straight line underneath that, and another number on the bottom. So, let's start with this bottom number. In this case, it's a four. This shows us the total number of parts that we are dividing something into. So, in this case, we are dividing something into four parts. The top number, on the other hand, is actually the number of parts that we have, or the number of parts that we are talking about. Let's try to explain that a little more clearly. Here we have a square which has been divided for us into equal sized parts. So we have one, two, three, four different parts. So when we write a fraction, this is the four that we have on the bottom of the fraction, the four parts. Here we see that one of the parts of the square has now been shaded in. So as a fraction, we say that the square has been divided into one, two, three, four parts, and the part that has been shaded in is just the one part here. So in other words, one part out of four. And this is what we call a quarter. Now, if I were to shade in two more parts, that means the shape has still been broken down into four parts, but now there are three out of four parts shaded in. Therefore, three over four is called three quarters. And certain fractions do have different names, so that one over two we call one half. One out of three is known as a third. One out of four is a quarter. We then have one out of five, and that is known as one fifth. Above that, you have one sixth, one seventh, one eighth, and the numbers go up as usual. So looking at the third here, if we had a two over three, that would simply be two thirds. And as we've just seen on the previous page, if we had three out of four, we would call that three quarters. Let's have a look at another example, and this time I'm using a circle. So we can see straight away that the circle has been divided into three equal parts. So that would be the number that goes on the bottom. Each of these is a third. And in fact, if we shade one of these in, let's say that one, we have one third shaded in. But of course, we also have two thirds that are not shaded in. So the white ones are two out of three. And of course, if you look at the circle as a whole, we have in total one, two, three parts. 
So actually we have three out of three. And here's a little rule with fractions. If the top number is the same as the bottom number, in other words, we have three out of three in this case, then we must have a whole circle. And the same would be true if that shape was a square. I'll just draw a rough square there. But if I take a square and I break it into four pieces, if I have one, two, three, four pieces, then I have all four out of four. Therefore, I have the whole shape. Shapes are not the only things we can find fractions of, and quite often we are asked to find the fraction of amounts. Here's a typical question. Becca has 10 chocolates, she gives seven to her friends, and we're asked what fraction of the chocolates does she have left? Well, if we are looking at this as a fraction, originally she had 10 chocolates. That was the total amount. So the 10 would go on the bottom. Now, if she has given seven away, that means out of the 10, she is now left with three. She has three out of 10. Therefore, the fraction is three tenths. Now, if you are using a calculator in a test or exam, you will notice that there are no fractions on a calculator. But there is a nice simple way around this. Because in fact, if we see a fraction, let's use three quarters again, what a fraction is actually telling us, or another way of saying three quarters, is three divided by four. So if we take a fraction and we take the top and divide it by the bottom, it actually turns it into a decimal. Let's try this on the calculator here. If we press the three and then the divide button and then the four and then press equals, we get 0 0.75. Three divided by four is equal to 0 0.75. And by doing that, we have converted a fraction into a decimal. And in fact, it is quite a useful thing to be able to remember some of the simple fractions and the decimals that they are equal to. So for instance, one half is equal to 0 0.5. We have one quarter, which is 0 0.2. 2, 5, and 3 quarters, which is equal to 0 0.75. Another two that are useful to know is 1 fifth, because that is equal to 0 0.2, and 1 over 10 is equal to 0 0.1. Remembering some of these simple ones can make things a little bit quicker in a test or an exam. And finally, let's have a look at what happens when we are asked to find the fraction of a number. Now, in this case, fraction of means multiply. So let's have a look at a simple sum. Let's say we are asked to find three quarters of 200. Now, that simply means we need to do 3 quarters times 200. If you remember what we did a few minutes ago, we said that 3 quarters is the same as 3 divided by 4. So if we rewrite 3 quarters as 3 divided by 4, we end up with 3 divided by 4 times 200. And that is exactly what you would put in your calculator to find 3 quarters of 200. Let's just have a look at that again. If we are asked to find 2 fifths of 70, again, we know that means 2 fifths times 70. 
and we also know that two fifths means two divided by five. So in a calculator, you would put two divided by five times 70. And the answer you would get would be 28. So there we've covered some of the basic principles behind fractions and looked how to find fractions of amounts. The next thing I think we need to look at is equivalent fractions. And I'm going to put a link at the side here to that particular video. If you have enjoyed this one, please hit the subscribe button. And if you hit the notifications button as well, you'll get to see any new videos that I produce. Thank you.